Hello, I'm Joan Justice with HealthWorks Collective, and I'm here today with Martha Hayward, Lead for Public and Patient Engagement at the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. April 16th is Healthcare Decisions Day, and I've invited Martha here to talk about end-of-life decisions and how important they really are. Martha has a background in healthcare marketing and patient advocacy and is a cancer survivor. She is working with the Conversation Project, a public engagement campaign to get conversations about end of life out into the open. The Conversation Project website offers support, information, tools, and tips about engaging in the important conversation about end of life. Martha, why don't you tell us a bit about the Conversation Project, how you got started with it, and what the mission is. Well, I guess I'll reflect on the fact that we're doing this uh, in honor of Healthcare Decisions Day, mm -hmm. and we need to reflect on the fact that nothing in life is certain but what? Taxes <laughs> and death. Right. Uh, and somehow we really like to avoid those two things, and I think in America we really like to avoid the, the idea that death really is a certainty, but we've done our research and we know that 100% of us <laughs> will die. And there's uh, a statistic. <laughs> Yes, that's our. That's we are a resource organization, but um, you know this really the conversation project is a project brought together by people who would experience the deaths of their sisters, uh, mothers, brothers, and realize that we are a society right now that does not in any way prepare. We do not prepare ourselves for the inevitable. Um, we're never prepared to pay our taxes, are we? Although we know that April fifteenth is coming up. But really, we're not prepared to really face what it is uh, that death, the inevitability of death. And in the world that we live in right now, um, we've medicalized death. And death is not a medical condition. Um, it is, it's a natural part of life. Um, and we tend to think of death as always happening in a medical institution. And yet we know that 70% of people who respond to a survey say that they want to die at home and have the option of doing that. Mm -hmm. And now we're creating other environments where it's appropriate and comforting um, and safe to die and involves the family. But not all of us know about those options. And so the goal is of the Conversation Project is to have all people's um, end-of-life wishes expressed and then respected. And so there's a big part of that that means in order for people to express their wishes, they need to know what the options are, mm -hmm. what's available, what, are, what kinds of environments, um, what can I do to have a good death. So that, that's really the beginning of it. Ellen Goodman, who is the Pulitzer Prize winning um, columnist from the Boston Globe, who has sort of chronicled uh, social change over the past 40 years brought this project to the Institute for Healthcare Improvement and in my role as public and patient engagement I just seized the opportunity to work with this group of people and again this is not a group of doctors or researchers this is a group of people mm -hmm. um, who want to make the experience of death we want to return it to, it to our own hands and make the experience of death a natural part of life and a good part of life. Yeah, um, I, I completely, completely agree. Uh, Martha, I think the big question is why are so many people afraid to talk about death, including the healthcare professionals? Well, that's a, that's a great question and, and just in those two parts, why are people afraid? Um, I, I think that, uh, and I've learned this from somebody who actually went onto the website of the Conversation Project and shared a story, and in her story she spoke about, she, she was exhorting others and saying, um, talking about end of life does not mean you've given up hope. It only means that you're respecting and acknowledging that end of life is coming. And I think that we have a real fear that if we talk about death, it may happen. But I've, I've also learned that whether we talk about it or not, <laughs> it's going to happen. And it just is, it's a funny thing to me because we are, we are a society of people who um, have learned and continue to learn over time to take control in our lives. We take control of our our weight, our health, our you know what we're learning. Mm -hmm. we, we we like to have some form of control, and yet around this one thing, um, we choose to put the blinders on. And and I, I think it is a societal piece that we have medicalized um, the this natural process. 
very interesting when you say, uh, you know, how do we get doctors to talk about uh, this process? Because we need to have all people express their wishes, but we also recognize that we need those. We need to create a world where, if people, when people, um, there are two places that those two groups that need to respect those wishes, and one is family and friends, and the other is the medical world. And what we've learned is that it's really very difficult to go into this conversation with people if you haven't had the conversation yourself or if you really haven't engaged with the idea of your own end of life. Mm -hmm. And so we're working with a, 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 some pioneers in um, the medical field, um, 10 institutions across America, where we're testing out ways to make hospitals, healthcare settings, primary care practices conversation ready. Oh, you um, are. Just, Great. Yep, yeah, which is really exciting uh, because it doesn't, it, both sides have to work. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You have to engage the medical profession too. Well, thank you so much, Martha. And for our readers, end of life conversations are so important. And too many people are dying in a way they wouldn't choose. So go to the website and look at the conversation project. It really can help you. Thanks so much, Martha. Excellent.